I hate game jams. Well, maybe not quite. I hate most game jams. Let me explain. Most game jams are really short 48 to 72 hour crunchathons where you basically have to no life it for two to three days and do nothing else but work on the jam. If you're in a position to do that sort of thing, like if you're a full time student, that can be really exciting and fun. However, I've always been in a position where I had other obligations. Having a job that restricted the time I could actually spend on the jam, or having other life obligations that prevented me from fully dedicating the time, etc. So I've always had this negative association with game jams. I never have the time, so I either don't get to participate, or if I do, I end up exhausted and feel like crap the whole time. Fun example, there was this one two-day game jam in college where a bunch of us were working in the same building really late into the night. I lived off campus and it ended up getting so late that I decided to just stay in the building and ended up falling asleep on a super uncomfortable bench in the building and I woke up feeling like absolute garbage. I don't even remember what we worked on or if we even finished. I think more than a couple other people did the same thing. Point being, that type of experience has left me feeling bitter about the whole concept. There's also a bunch of other reasons I don't like shorter jams, but I'll save that for another video. However, this past week I heard that Blackthorn Proud was running a game jam, and this one was a week long. I felt motivated to take on the challenge of a jam given that it spanned a whole week and worked with my schedule. Given my issues with jams in the past, I've never actually finished one on my own, so this jam was the perfect opportunity to finally finish one on my own. Saturday morning came around and the theme was announced, less is more. Pretty meta theme name if you ask me, but great. Just one problem, the more I thought about what to make, the less ideas I actually had. While trying to come up with an idea, I found this video on how to think through a game jam theme and come up with some ideas. You should watch the video if you're interested, but the thesis of the video is a sort of flowchart ideation process that the developer describes. You come up with a bunch of interpretations of the theme, pick one, and then break it down into more specifics. Do this until you either settle on something you like or run out of ideas, rinse and repeat until you land on something you do like. I ideated through a few different idea paths and had mostly duds. Most of the initial ideas were some variation of less stat is more of other stat, and I knew that would also be the first thought most people had, so I immediately ditched those ideas. For better or for worse, part of a game jam is standing out from every other participant, and pursuing an idea most other participants would have felt counterintuitive. I also have this problem where my first two ideas are 2D platformer or top-down shooter, so I immediately ruled those out from the pool of ideas. After a bit of pain, I landed on an idea for a mini RTS where units come from a central base on the map. The base periodically gets attacked, and the more units you have at base, the less damage the base takes. Conversely, the less units you have at base, the more objectives you can complete. I've wanted to take a stab at making an RTS for a while, so it felt like a pretty good idea. I then spent the rest of the day working on the core loop. I was able to get the main mechanics working within the first day. The base exists in the center of the map, and you're able to click on resources to spawn and send a unit towards the resource. Once there, the unit stops, takes some time to mine out the resource, and then carries it back to the base. To get all of this working, I did a lot of tinkering with the A-Star Pathfinding Unity package, which I'm also using in my current project, The Last Flower. Using A-Star for this jam actually helped me learn a lot more about how the whole thing works, which I'll be able to use in my game. Anyway, aside from using A-Star to get pathfinding working, the resource collection is basically working by the unit attacking the resource and decreasing its health every few seconds. Once the resource dies, a resource drop spawns above the unit, and then the unit walks it back to the base where it then despawns. Going into Sunday, my goal was to finish the core loop and have the game be done on a code level so that I could spend the rest of the week adding art assets and polish. The main things for the day were getting all of the different values working. The number of units you have, the base's health and attack stats, resource totals, etc. I got placeholder game over and win screens in place, just so there was an actual win-loss state. Having put a good amount of stuff into the game at this point, I realized something was missing. You see, my vision for how the player would think and feel while playing this game wasn't really apparent in the current design. I wanted the player to need to balance how many units they were using to actively collect resources with how many they were leaving at the base to defend against the enemies. The problem was that in the current design, there was no reason to not just leave all but one unit at the base and super slowly send out one unit at a time. It would be slow and boring, but you'd eventually win. I wanted some way for the player to feel the need to maintain that balance and feel pressure to take the risk of sending out more units than they should. I was feeling a little stuck on the problem, so I stepped out to get some breakfast when it hit me. A timer. A timer would solve the problem. It would prevent the strategy of just sending out one unit at a time by physically not letting the player do that. It would also create pressure and make the player think about the balance. Do I send more units out so I can collect resources faster before the time runs out, or should I leave some at the base to defend against enemies? Speaking of enemies, that was the main thing I was pushing off for some reason. I guess I thought there were going to be more work than they actually were. The enemies use the same A-star pathfinding package as the units, but they just target the base, stop, and then deal damage until either they or the base dies. The base also auto-attacks them and deals damage based on the number of units still at the base. The enemies spawn off-screen based on a timer that's much shorter than the full time. 
I figured that if the player needs to balance how many units they're sending versus keeping to defend the base, it would probably help to know when an enemy is coming so that they could plan around that a bit. And with that, I finished the main gameplay loop. It was time to come up with a theme for the game. Up until this point, I hadn't really spent any time thinking about the theme or setting for the game at all. I typically like to take a mechanics first approach with game development and come up with a fun, compelling core loop before applying a theme or any sort of setting to it. Other developers, like Nintendo, also build games this way, and I really just wanted to find a way to say that I make games like Nintendo in this video, so there. When I usually think of small RTS games like this, the medieval setting immediately jumps to mind. But I don't really like medieval settings. I know, I know, I just feel like the whole thing is super overdone. How many games or movies or whatever can we have about knights and swords and dragons and whatever else? It's excessive and other settings exist. Anyway, I wanted to think of something more interesting than that, so I tried thinking of other settings RTS games have used and space came to mind. I initially dismissed it, but I jumped from space to aliens and then it sort of hit me. Aliens abducting cows. What if an alien spaceship came down to Earth to abduct cows and then the military started attacking the ship? It felt just silly enough to stand out, so I went with it. I then spent the rest of the evening working on the first piece of art for the game, this little alien. I'm not really an artist in the traditional sense, even though I do enjoy digital drawing every now and then, so I sort of leaned into it by going for a style that felt reminiscent of Newgrounds Flash era, and it felt like a complementary style to the silliness of the theme, and it felt like an achievable way to push myself artistically since I've been making pixel art for a few months now. I spent the rest of the week working on more art in the mornings and evenings before and after work. I spent the evenings drawing and then would spend an hour or two in the morning implementing the art into the game. I drew this cute little cow, this tank, this alien ship, and a few other art assets. One of the mornings towards the end of the week was spent on UI implementation so that you can actually tell what's going on, and it started to really come together. I also knew I needed a name for the game, and it sort of hit me while I was working on the art one night. Aliens need milk too. It totally fit with the silliness of the concept, so I just rolled with it. Thursday night, I tried to really spend time polishing. I tried changing up the damage system between enemies and the base to be based on bullets instead of just invisible damage. However, I ended up losing a few hours to the problem and could not get it to work for the life of me. I eventually had to give up since it was getting really late and I had work the next morning, and I had nowhere near enough time to work on the game on Friday since the jam ended at 6 p.m. So even if I tried submitting in the morning, I'd be rushed to get it done before work, and that was just a really bad idea. I decided that it was time to package up the game and submit as is, even though it wasn't where I really wanted it to be. Overall, I'm still happy with the outcome, even though I didn't get everything done that I wanted to, I still finished and submitted. Most jams in the past I either never finished or had worked on a team and never felt like I properly contributed. Just being able to finish a game on my own that actually had some level of polish in it and was mechanically complete was enough for me to feel satisfied with the jam. Big shout out to Blackthorn Prod for putting the jam together. It was a great experience and I'm looking forward to the next one. If you'd like to play my entry, Aliens Need Milk 2, there's a link down in the description below where you can try it out. Be sure to also check out the other jam entries and see what other folks made. I'm Tyler Haddad, thank you for watching. Thank you.